Welcome to the Northwest. I don't know if uh, any of you have been up in this part of the country before. Is anybody from the uh, state of Washington? Have anybody? Uh, Oregon. Oregon, okay. Well, we're going to arrive up in the field about, uh, about 1630 hours this afternoon, somewhere about that time. Uh, not a lot of daylight left. Certainly in the mountains, the sun goes down quicker than it does around here. But uh, you can simulate that uh, that's the time that you suddenly found yourself on the ground. And uh, it, you'll be broken up into four groups. We're gonna, I have, each group will have an instructor. And you'll be working with that instructor, and uh, we're going to have some guided discussions, and we're going to do some problem solving and organizing, and you're going to find out, and I have uh, found out after years of survival training, that's really what survival is, problem solving and organizing. Leadership comes in. You're going to find a lot of that because you're not alone up there. You're going to have to work together. You will be able to cope with the situation. However, it's going to take some resources, namely knowledge, equipment, and what we call the will to survive. I defined the will to survive uh, for you. We talked about what you can use to strengthen your will to survive, and this is the most important thing. A positive mental attitude is the single most important ingredient to strengthen your will to survive. In addition to that, uh, realize your survivor's mission. Tap into something greater than you. Fear, hate, uh, love, whatever it takes to tap, religion, whatever it takes to tap into, tap into it. Uh, in addition to that, uh, maintaining and building a good physical fitness will help you strengthen your will to survive. Being prepared ahead of time, we talked about that. And then understanding how you react to each of these stresses. This will help you. All right, the first thing with this uh, Mark 13 flare, does anybody know where it's packed or where it's located? Okay, it's going to be in your seat kit. How many of you folks fly with a vest? Do you fly with a vest on or just a seat kit? Okay, all your signaling devices that you're going to find, they're going to be located in your seat kit. Now, there's two ends of this flare. There's a day end and there's a night end. How do I identify the night end? This should be a quick review for you. Okay, things go bump in the night. Okay, and it's red. Okay, about halfway. Okay. And then hold your lanyard in your bare hand. Glove in your right hand, 90 degrees, and pull down. <laughs> yeah, you ready? Go ahead. Now, see how it is inflaming? What you can do is kind of shake it a little bit or tap it on the ground. If you're in water, you can go ahead and kind of submerse it in the water. Now, realize, depending upon the environment you're in, if you're in a real cold environment, the smoke's going to stay right on the ground. In this environment, it will raise a little bit because we uh, have a little bit of heat. So if it is a misfire, just wait three or five, three to five seconds, preferably five, and then you're set to go. It takes about nine seconds to go the entire height. So load it in there, slightly into the wind. Check the speed for the launch. If it doesn't go off, or the flare, pull it up again. There you go. Oh, there you keeping go. your head down just a little bit so you don't feel that. Can you feel that it's yeah. working in there a little, little bit? bit? Okay. Okay, look where you're aiming. Pull down. There you go. Good job. That's uh that's pretty good. That's almost directly overhead. Nicely done. For the first time that's uh <laughs> that's pretty good. Okay, two others? <laughs>
that occasionally you can pull and land it out, and it won't go off. Important thing, Leroy. Yeah. Keep your sleeping bag dry. Oh, <laughs> pimple patch. Oh, no. <laughs> pimple patch. You <laughs> catch her. Okay. All right, with all the means. First of all, it is very easy to get disoriented out here, okay, turned around. So if you do happen to go walking off from your camp, please let your instructor know or at least take somebody with you. If you happen to fall down and get hurt, and we have had people get hurt out here, where's Bud? I think last time we took on, what, 10 stitches? Yeah. Who did that? Uh, for various reasons. We do have a medic, so if you do hurt yourself, if you get cuts, uh, fall down and, and twist an ankle or something like that, please let your instructor know we'll have a guy take a look at it. Just so that it can't get any worse. I think we've got some doctors out here doing uh, Does anybody have any questions? I think we already got you broke down in your four groups. Basically, we don't have any established camps out here. We're just going to kind of wander off. You're going to have to carry the stuff. If you have to make two trips, uh, just kind of set it off to the side and you can come back in a little bit and get it. And then you're going to go out and just find your place. Just kind of let you folks know we're kind of short on daylight right now, so we have our five basic needs which we need to start meeting. If we were to start looking at them just real quick, we can start identifying. We have health, which is just medical problems, and I don't see anybody with any sort of medical problems, so we can break it on down from there. Protection from the environment, sustenance, and then making sure, you know, travel and recovery. Uh, recovery bring that of signal. We're going to kind of take this as an immediate action type of landing. We just hit, we have these basic needs before night, nighttime falls. Which of those needs you think is most important right now before darkness comes? Shelter. Okay, shelter, protection from the environment. So, okay, now we're walking. Try to keep a little bit of distance between you. And if you're going to go, if you have branches on the trail, make sure you push them down. And make sure there's distance behind you. Don't whip the person behind you. Make sure that you stay together. If someone's dropping something, help them out. Okay, try to stay together. We don't want anybody to get lost out here. So make sure you can see the person in front of you. You got all seven, correct? Let's go. Take account of what we got. Yeah. And break okay. into the group. Let's break out the steel. Okay. Sweet 
got a better level. He's got a uh, life raft. He's got a water bag there. So there's the items he's got to work with. Some more pile. And you can decide if we're going to do individual or... Um, I guess we, uh, we probably ought to decide what kind of shelter and how many we'd like to build. Oh, these are nice. Ooh, those would be warm. Those are nice. Yeah, get three of those? Uh, looks like we've got two. I had a question for you. Mm -hmm. Before we down all this water and have to wait for the purification tails, is this freeze-dried stuff we have to add water to? No, those are already set to go. They're set ready to go. To eat. Okay. Ready to eat. Big difference, because if you Keywords. add water... Do you add water to LERPs? Yeah, I mean, long-range patrols. Do we give those here? Well, I think those are all MREs. Okay. Are they making those anymore? I don't I think they are. So I haven't seen... Uh, I haven't seen any new ones out for a long time. Probably get an yeah, line we're if we sort of, sort of. You get two lines. I have the engineering task of uh, going here. Uh, yeah, here's a, a long one that works. Okay. Cross them up here. Great. Maybe you take off this part of it. Oh, you want to prop it up here, okay. Yeah. Okay, we're not at that point yet. Let me finish getting ones inside. Okay. But as far as the other basic protective need that we have here, and some people have asked about bears and that, it would be a fire. When you take a look at a fire, and it does, it meets a whole lot of different needs. Probably one of the biggest needs for me, not necessarily that of the warmth, but that of the, the comfort, and making, making me feel a little bit you know, more at home. I know with that fire, it's going to keep the bears and everything else away from me. And that, to me, is important. Because you still, you hear those things that go bump in the night, and it does, it can keep you up and ruin a good night of sleep. I never used one of those things before. Okay. One of what things? Oh, the striker. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You ready? Yeah, you're doing perfect. See, okay. he's got the metal match aimed down into the tinder. That's what you want. So you're directing the spark right into the tinder. You want to get the heat of that spark and go for it. Let's see how this goes. One more. One more time. Okay. Really prep. There you go. Yeah, that works. Okay. All right, better go. Put our head toward this bigger tree. That sounds good since there's a uh, animal hole down here. <laughs> I don't want to wake up with a uh, rocky raccoon in my face. <laughs> Just grab him, okay? <laughs> Just grab him and kill him. I'm going to be there now. See, how is it to use your watch to find north? Or south? You gotta know what time it is. Oh, wait, we're gonna make a thing on this one. Uh, let's see. We got the shadows coming we from there. Yeah, it's like the sun's from. coming across. That'll give us the most. And halfway between the hour hand and 12. Is the south direction. 
Yeah. See anybody bring a compass? Yeah, I got one. yeah, I've got a compass down ah. here if you want to check that, see how accurate that is. This is what we thought was south, about right here. Especially if you consider it's really 9 o'clock sometime. Mm. North should be over your left That's shoulder. North, sir. Good, well, yeah. We can use this somehow or another if you want to figure that into this, sir. The east west would be this way. Get the east west side up. You're going to have to grab this one around your ankles here. They really did it twice. Yeah. Why did they do it twice? Well, he left them open the first time, loose, so it wouldn't be... Uh, very good. Enough? <laughs> we have to find out who that was. These are the last few hangers on. Ooh. Ooh. Canard beans? Pork and beans? But they are good. No, you can it says bean people come out. I've seen oh. signs down the highway for a stress yeah. something else. Ground beef with spice sauce. <laughs> nope. <laughs> spice sauce? Mystery meat. Okay. This beef, beef okay. diced with gravy sounds better all the time. Ham and chicken loaf, bean Ooh, component. Yes. We don't want that one. Out. Have Bruce was filet mignon. Mm, uh, yum, beef stew. Yeah. Okay, I'll beef try this. Stew. Beef beef stew. Those are all good. Some, some are just better than others. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, yes, sure. sir. <laughs> Excuse us, please. <laughs> don't scrabble for it. Like yeah. Keeping this stuff. Yeah. All right, that's all right. Hey. Peaches. Pears. 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 Hey, what happened to my peaches yeah. I had <laughs> earlier today? Oh, here you go. Here's the cheese spread for you. Maybe I cut some of my own. Hold on a what sec. What is this? Oh, here's the beans. Brown. All right. Oh, here's the toilet paper. Want a brownie? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is that the brownie? brownie? That's a brownie. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you let that go? How come? Explode. A very <laughs> By the way, if you see stuff in here that you don't want, like uh, like the beverages nah, and cocoa yeah. and stuff, Put it in there. yeah, just throw it in there, and that just way, if somebody there. wants it later, they can use it. What, what's the big advantage of this shelter when we had last night? This one right here? Yeah. That's just showing you how to use that parachute material. Okay. And it does give you a little bit more concealment. Actually, I'll show you to where you can almost close this off if you had a lot of insects. Things of that sort flying around that are bothering you. Come over here, I do the same thing. It <laughs> <laughs> would be worth a t shirt, wouldn't it? We're doing a circle going across. <laughs> I want to go back to camp. You guys continue to sew and stuff. Stuff till your heart's content. Oh, I'm sure we will. What kind of stuff do we get to do this afternoon? Um, maybe put out some snares. What should I ask? Snares, talk about medical. We'll discuss a little bit more on water as far as global water. And firecraft, I'll do another fire.
Ooh, there's our eyes. But I can't get him. Oh, I got him! Oh, no, I didn't. Crap, I thought I had him. He was hanging on there for a long time. Yeah, I didn't clean you, the water. You, you can hold that and pose for that camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like I, these, these are the ones I caught down there, all the stuff you were filming before. <laughs> Why don't we, uh, before we head up, let's make sure all our water containers are filled up also. shelters and then have another meal whenever we want to. Good. Good. Dr. Kermit, did you hear that? Okay. Where are you? Supply of attack. So where do you want to start the fires? Okay, well, we'll do them in here then. Now, you're going to... I don't know that anybody will eat that. Dave, I've tried the peaches. Don't try the peaches. Peaches aren't bad if you add a little water in there. You add it right into the package here? Yeah. That's what we're doing wrong. We're adding the peaches to the water, and they're kind of dissolving. It's great. <laughs> You'll like this. Totally awesome. <laughs> and here we have some peaches. We get a lot of second degree burns. People pick their canteen cup out of the water or out, out of the fire, and they get lines across their hands where they get like little blisters. And how many of you guys did that last night? Did you guys heat up any water on the fire? Okay. <laughs> you guys shake. I, I see some doubt out there. <laughs> okay. So you're going to want to be careful with that, reaching in the fire, things like that. You don't you want to prevent all that uh, injury as all possible. What other kind of injuries could you have other than burns? Breaks, broken bones. bones. Okay. Before we get to that, let's talk about bleeding, because that's probably going to be one thing you want to control. Thank you. I'm going to wait until he gets about at the end of that meadow, and I'm going to give him a hot mic. Got my flashlight on him. You got it on him? Rescue, rescue, rescues, 4P01 Alpha, take heading 170. What do you think? Are, Are you hurt? That's negative, no injuries. <laughs> we have uh, six survivors.
Pacific heading 140. Sam? Yeah, he's, he's behind those trees right there, Leroy. Okay. He's coming straight at us right there. Uh, negative injuries, and we have a signal. Um, I have your visual at this time come slightly right. And we have a white X. Roll out. Roll out. We're directly ahead. Counting five. Say again, please. Uh, negative injuries. We have eight survivors. Uh, continue to turn to two zero zero. Roger. We have reflect. Uh, we have mirrors and reflective panel on the ground. Turn right. Stop. Turn. Overhead my position at my mark. Ready, ready, mark directly underneath you. For the helicopter to make up there, we probably wouldn't really notice it down here. Uh, if it makes you feel better and you're comfortable doing it, then do it. That's my critique to you. Everybody did an outstanding job. Did you get the helicopter overhead? Then you did a good job. If it's five degrees and you want to correct them, you do five degrees and correct them. If it's a left turn or right turn like you were doing, uh, like he was doing, then that's fine. Do it. Whatever works for you. Since it is slipping fast. Uh, everybody will have some good stories to tell about that, I'm sure. Some folks. Feedback I got, some folks slept pretty darn good. Yeah, that is nothing in the shaft. I bet, yeah, it must have been. <laughs> but at least it gives you some idea of something, the problem that you're going to have. Uh, we've had a pretty good time. Yeah, I had somebody tell me one time if you're not having a good time at what you're doing, then you're probably not doing it right. And uh, I think there's a lot to that. But uh, to seriously think about the possibility of ever having to put to use what we've been talking about the last couple of days. Uh, consider that uh, ejecting from a T-38 is going to be a pretty harrowing experience. Uh, depending on your altitude, there may be some free fall involved. That automatic timer set to open at 14,000 feet. You're going to operate a parachute. You maybe have never done that before. Find yourself on the ground. You're going to be in shock, guaranteed. Nobody goes through something like that and doesn't you know, comes out of it uh, and says, uh, well, phew, I'm glad that's over and walked away from it. It's, uh, you're going to be in shock. Uh, statistics show that uh, you're going to, chances are, there will be some sort of an injury. And uh, then you're going to have to deal with it from there. To try to make the decisions that you need to make at that point in time without giving any thought to the situation ahead, you'll remember this, and hopefully a lot of the stuff that uh, we've passed on to you will be something that will be 
something that you can grab onto and will get you through. So much for survival.